name is Justin Ahrens. I'm the creative director of Rule 29 Creative. And we've been in business for 15 years. I started my career in a completely different context. I worked for an in-house uh, organization and I loved it, but there was something missing. I, I loved the, the opportunity to go after clients and to uh, try to find the kind of work that you ultimately wanted to do. So that's when I started Rule 29. And our whole mantra is to make creative matter. So we want to not only make our work matter to our clients, but ideally do work that also matters to us and if possible, somehow affect the world in a positive way. One of the things that I realized pretty quickly when I started my organization was that I was not trained in how to run a business. And like most of us, you know, when we get out of school, we know about design. If we're lucky, we have some extra skill, but we don't normally spend time on how to run a business. And so I really wanted to study culture and how a culture affects your creative. Because what I found in the different jobs that I've had in the past is that I really, um, excelled in some and didn't in others. And I thought that was because there was something wrong with me. And I'm sure there were things I needed to learn and uh, navigate, but really it came down to the fact that I really excelled in the cultures that were most aligned with who I was as a person. And so one of the things I explore at the conference this year is, what is more important, your culture or your creative? Uh, I don't think it's as clear cut as we may think. And I think it's really important if you have the opportunity to A, understand what kind of culture you want to be in and find those organizations and uh, try to get a job there. Or if you're on the flip side, if you're on the hiring side, make sure that you understand what your culture is and you are talking about those values, you're living those values, and then when you hire someone, you actually test them for the kind of culture that they desire. Because I think when you have a team that buys into what you're about and has the same values, then you're able to do some incredible, amazing things. I think when we're looking for a job or, or a place that we want to emulate, we often look at the work that they do. And output is, of course, important. You know, the pieces that we see in different award magazines or that we see someone present on stage is really what inspires us and gets us excited about what we do. But often those things are created in a culture where the creative and that culture align. Uh, because if you aren't in a place that allows you to um, be authentic and uh, they're not transparent with you on the type of work they want to do and they're ultimately not attracting the right kind of clients, you're never going to do the kind of creative that you ultimately hope to do. I can say without question the answer is yes. And if you're out there watching this and don't think that's possible, then uh, 
come see one of my talks, number one, um, or check out our stuff that we write about. But think about what we can do as creatives. We have the power to shift people's perspective. We have the ability to see something completely different. Uh, whether that's an election, whether that is raising awareness about a particular cause or, or famine or war or whatever it is, we have the ability to get people to pay attention and to give them information in a way that they can um, make a, you know, in-depth or knowledgeable, you know, uh, decision on what's going on. I think that's incredible. Not to mention the fact that we create things that people desire and they want to they purchase and, you know, they want to have in their home or we do work that others want to emulate. I think all of those things have the power to really kind of change the way we see things. So for example, let's talk about the, the design of like the Target pill bottle. That literally saves people's lives. If you take the right medicine, um, because it's very easy to read, and you don't take something else that let's say you're allergic to or whatever else, life saved. If you do work for an organization that, um, let's say works in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, we're doing a project like that right now, and you help them raise awareness and uh, promote education on, let's say, the world water crisis, and you help them raise X amount of money to put um, a water system in a community and teach them how to take care of that, you've literally helped save lives. So I think design can completely and utterly make an impact in this world. And obviously there's a lot of things that come with it, but it has to start with an understanding and a perspective. And as creatives, we have an amazing opportunity to do that. And that's why I just love this job. I think when you're talking about design for good or you know design for humanity or however you want to phrase it and you want to tie into this that the aesthetic part of that that's just as crucial you can't get a message across unless it's clear you can't make um, impact as well if it's not well thought out well designed or if it's not attractive to that that culture or um, that that particular set of people I think that's in itself beautiful uh, to create design that can communicate at such a powerful and impactful and memorable way in itself, at least for me, is beautiful. Uh, how artistic it is or what it looks like, you know, from just uh, the quality of, let's say, an illustration or a photograph, I think that's, of course, incredibly valuable. And when all those things work together, I think that's when you can really move mountains. I think the more and more technology gets um, more available, and simpler and into billions of hands, the concept of web and design uh, doing a beautiful dance together is more and more important than ever. The fact that I need to not only design an experience for a desktop to a tablet to a phone and if it's responsive and all that sort of thing, that's an incredible responsibility and so many steps to think about. But I think today, Design has an opportunity to make just as much impact um, in the web arena as it does in any other arena. If I could tell someone what the future of the web was going to be, I'd probably be a billionaire. Um, but I think the easy answer to a question like that is the fact that it's going to become, the world's going to become more and more accessible. I think my desires and experiences are going to become more available to me from a mobile device or from a watch or whatever the new technology is. And I think that as, for example, as the web quote unquote gets smaller in the watch or in the phone or whatever else, I think again design is going to really have to lead the way to make sure that that experience is something that is easy to use and, and wonderful and uh, it's a great experience uh, or otherwise those products aren't going aren't to sell. I find inspiration for what I do in a lot of different places. Um, I love the power of story, so I see any and every movie that I possibly can. Um, it's still one of those just good old-fashioned experiences where you can sort of get transported somewhere else or pretend you're in this world that doesn't exist. I love that. But I really um, am inspired by work that is helping impact the world in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I love reading about designers who are making it difference in their local communities, their national communities, their global communities, and how they use their everyday superpowers to really make a difference. Those kind of projects really, really get me excited. One of the things that we really pride ourselves on at Rule 29 is, I think no matter 
what sort of technology or design project or whatever you're using on. One of the largest parts I think of our jobs is to educate our clients in what we do. So they don't think we just download a, a WordPress template and put a website together, right? Uh, there's a process there. Uh, we take things into consideration. We do research. We look at their competition. We try to figure out how can we create a brand that's unique to them. And we take them through that step by step, you know, by asking great questions, by doing research, by providing them a, a you know, a variety of examples with sound, great reasoning, and how those things are going to help their clients have a great experience, whether that's a logo or a website or a packaging or whatever. And we've had clients for 10, 15 years, and we're still taking them through certain steps and educating them on what it is that we do, especially as the world becomes more and more connected and letting them know that how the brand um, is in every part of that. And so it's a constant education process. When we make a pitch or talk to clients or show them work, you know, whatever stage we're in, I think it's really important to remember that part of the process in a lot of ways is just as important as the idea, um, as the execution of what you're doing. We really work hard to bring them in on the story. We want them to be excited about this logo that we're showing them. We want them to be pumped about this brochure or this even HTML email that we're showing them. So we really work hard to say, here's the overall story, here's what we're trying to do together. And here how, here's how this answers that or plays into that narrative. And if you're not doing that, I think you're kind of missing out on bringing them along in what you do. Um, continually creating value and highlighting the fact that you understand their story and how what you do is really important. So every time we um, start a, uh, a presentation, we go back and say, hey, here's what we talked about, here's what you guys are about, here's what our goals are, and kind of lay out how that story flows in the project. You know, I think about the uh, different organizations or companies out there that where you can buy a logo for $50 or you know get a brochure template and design it and you know I used to that used to frustrate me a bit and I think in the end what we're finding is those types of clients that want to use those types of things aren't the ones that we want to work with and if designers are using that um, often they're not designing for the, our type of clients or the ones who value what we're doing, who, who see the difference between you know, um, researching and putting a lot of thought behind something and showing them results and you know, uh, having a multifaceted approach and thought process to it. They just don't, we just don't seem to be in the same um, category of, of business. That's why I think part of our process as designers or creatives, whatever role you're in, is to make sure we educate our clients on what we do. So they know the difference between a logo that costs them $50 and a logo that costs them $5,000. Even, even though they might not see it right away. So I don't worry too much about that. Um, I don't think I've ever lost a job to uh, a logo like that. I've had to use one of them in a brand identity and it was excruciating. So um, just because it, it, it was very, it was thought at a very minimal level and so we had, had to kind of like re-engineer the story and the thought process behind it. But I don't worry too much about that stuff. Right now is one of the best times to be a designer than I can remember, at least when I read history before I was around and now. I think more than ever designers are recognized or design is recognized uh, more than it ever has. You know, uh, not just with Apple and with Target and all those sort of things. Those companies of course help. But when you think about big brands and when you think about how much designers are you know, um, involved in so many things, uh, look at the the current election or look at the Obama campaign, you know, look at uh, those creatives who are doing um, design for good projects when there's like disaster relief or something that's going on. I think that people understand that design is there. They love the feel of great design, the look of great design. And I think we're just, design is probably, you know, more recognized now than ever. And will there ever be a design designer that's recognized um, at a pop culture level? You know, like, you know, Andy Warhol, or whatever else. I mean, I think maybe there are. I heard a quote from one of my good friends, Noreen Moriaka, and she said, being a famous designer is like being a famous dentist. And I, I think that we're still kind of in that category. You know, um, I think there's some great ones, you know, like Aaron Draplin and Stefan Sagmeister and, and the gang at Pentagram and, you know, Jessica Hish, all those guys, they're great. 
And I don't know who knows them outside of our design world because I'm in it. Um, but I think they're pretty close to rock stars. And, and so uh, it's a great time to be a designer.